All right, everyone, it is interview time and we are here with Alice Child and we're going to talk about the five things you should know when it comes to sex as well as intimacy games, sex games, what's a sex game, sex toys, erotic tools to have more spicy, I was going to say romance, but I mean, romance can be part of it, but not everyone wants romance. So sex or eroticism or intimacy in your life. And before we dive in, even though you all heard a little bit about Alice in the bio or in the intro, can you, Alice, tell our listeners how you got to where you are today in the field of sexuality? Absolutely. And thanks so much for having me. Yeah, I've always just been fascinated by human sexuality. And I was actually lucky enough to not be that embarrassed or shameful when it came to talking about sex growing up. I was lucky to live in a pretty shame-free household and found it a lot easier talking about sex than a lot of my friends. But despite that, I still didn't do a lot of my own sexual exploration until I actually moved across the other side of the world from the UK to Australia because I'd only been in monogamous and heterosexual relationships. Um, And then when I got here, I suddenly had this sexual enlightenment, I suppose, of being able to explore all of these sides of my sexuality um, that I hadn't been able to do back back home. And it was so powerful for me. It was so powerful for my mental health, for my confidence, for how I showed up at work even, how I showed up in friendships. And it really did just change my life, being able to explore um, my bi curiosity, going to sex parties, kink and BDSM becoming polyamorous for a time and I just it just made me realize like why you know why don't more people have these moments and the more I got talking to to friends and other people in the communities it seemed that so many people shared that experience you know that there needed to be a big transformative moment either moving abroad or a big divorce or a breakup or a health scare that really triggers them to prioritize their sexual health and their exploration and it can be so so powerful when you're able to do that so i started uh, wanting to learn more and wanting to connect more and more to people. Um, and I started putting on workshops. I sort of gathered together different professionals, sexual health, and put on all sorts of workshops with very different topics, things like sex after childbirth, menopause and sex, kink and BDSM, ethical non-monogamy, uh, painful sex. And there were just incredible sessions with really, really amazing educators. And it just made me want to be where they are. And I was like, how do I, how do I become you guys? How do I not just facilitate these spaces, but have the, have the answers and be, be one of these people with the answers. So I started doing uh, my studies and studying sexology and counseling and erotic massage and all of these other amazing things, while also continuing my own exploration and journey in the world of sexuality. Um, and excitingly, it's now what I do full time. So I now work with individuals, couples and groups to help people have happier, healthier and more fulfilled sex lives. And yeah, a lot of that work is is still online and by telehealth, but it's also uh, in person here in Sydney. So yeah, really exciting that I've got to this stage because it's been so important for me personally. And so now being able to see others on those journeys is really rewarding. To see them having success as well. That's probably really gratifying when it takes their sex life from zero to 160 or 69, Ooh. I don't know, whatever number <laughs> you feel would uh, apply. 100? Is it like, like you went above and beyond? You went above and beyond. <laughs> it's like amazing yeah, it's stuff in happening. In the cosmos. Yeah. Exactly. Ooh, I like that. Mind <laughs> blowing. Well, this is one thing we as shameless sex ourselves, we, we know about spicing up sex lives and how important that is. And I feel like Amy and I are both playful enough humans. And even though creativity isn't always at the top of mind, it is super important when it comes to sex, having playfulness, creativity, and being that inner, inner Alice child, <laughs> being that, having the inner playful child come out. So the question here is why, if you're not Amy or April or Alice child, why is creativity and playfulness important in sex, whether it's with yourself or with partners? Yeah, it's a great question, especially because a lot of people don't think of themselves as playful or think of their sexual expression as particularly playful. Like, oh, games, that's not for me. I'm not a playful. I'm an I'm adult. Not playful in the bedroom. Yeah, I'm an adult. I'm pretty profound or serious or like, you know, dominating or whatever in the bedroom. I don't need games. But I think it's really helpful because so many people have one or two scripts or patterns of behavior when it comes to sex like alone like in masturbation or also with a partner and they'll tend to like learn what feels good for them and then sort of follow that script or that pattern 
And at best, that becomes boring. Um, and at worst, it can make sex feel really filled with pressure and really emotionally stressful um, and lead to conflict in the relationship or, you know, lots of self-doubt and things like that. So I think by bringing in these sorts of games, it helps people learn what they like and how to ask for it in a really safe, happy, fun container. Uh, and it gets people back to pleasure and away from the pressure that they might have experienced in their sex life as well. And yeah, I think a lot of people have got into a bit of a cycle as well uh, when it comes to average or bad sex, um, like due to bad communication styles or like non-existent communication uh, or like enduring touch that doesn't feel great. And by being told like, these are some games that you're going to give a go and see what works and what doesn't, it gets people back into that curious mindset, you know, that beginner's mindset of learning new things about their own body, about their partner's body, about what pleasure could even be for them breaking those old habits um and also I think novelty really gets people out of their heads and like back into their bodies which is such a an issue I found with a lot of my clients are so in their head and they can't even sort of feel the amazing things that are going on for them and like novelty really helps with that as well so yeah I was going to ask why people struggle with bringing playfulness and newness and creativity in the bedroom the novelty aspect and you kind of already talked about that you know they're, they're very in their head but you know, why do you think that that's kind of the original programming? Like, why are people functioning from that place? Or like, I need to be so, so serious. You know, <laughs> do you think it's like the conditioning? That's what we're told that sex should be. We're trying to be porn stars or, or I don't know, like, like you said, the dominant person, you know, but, but why do people have this? Yeah, I think it's so varied for different people, right? You know, shame is a huge oh, yeah. one. You know, that old, that old chestnut, you know, everyone lives with some form of sexual shame and it shows up in various ways for everyone because we still live in a very conservative and sex negative society and so being like playful and silly in the bedroom can feel really at odds to that uh, and also I think people hate the idea of being playful and silly and laughing because it sometimes feels like you're you know not in the mood and not connected to your partner when you're in that sort of like more playful curious mindset which is wrong but mm -hmm. <laughs> not wrong but it's you know, not that necessarily. It's not right. That way. It's yeah. not wrong, but it's not yeah. right. It's not right. Okay. <laughs> well, you yeah. you can laugh and be awkward and silly and have great sex and be connected, exactly. right? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly that. Yeah. And everyone has a different sexual style as well. So, what feels like a really authentic expression of one person's sexuality might be very different to someone else's, and veering from that style can feel really edgy and difficult if it's what you've known your whole sexual expression you know you like that this is who I am in the bedroom and delving into these different realms feels really edgy and uncomfortable which can sometimes lead to the most amazing realizations but you need like a safe container and you know safe safety in order to do that and to sort of push yourself and see who else you could be Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you can be anyone you want to be in the bedroom, really, as long as consent is. Involved. Well, I mean, if it's you being just you <laughs> yeah. in the bedroom, this is me. Well, and that just—I I know April's question, but so when we're going to talk about like you know, the, this whole thing about being creative with sex and playful. Is there a difference between doing that with yourself, like what April's kind of alluding to there, or be playing with mm. others? Like, I just don't even like. How how do I get playful with myself? So, I mean, I know how to play with mm. myself, but like, how do I bring in the same? And maybe this is a, a question for later because you're going to share more about some other ways to do this. But yeah, is, is there a difference? Yeah, you can totally get playful with yourself. It's the same sort of mindset, you know, like curious, breaking old habits, seeing what else you discover, you know having that mindset of I'm discovering this amazing body and all that it is capable of for the very first time. And like, I'm touching myself, like I'd want a lover to touch me. And I'm, you know, being as curious about my own body as I'd want someone else to be curious with me. And you can definitely still surprise yourself and tease yourself and edge yourself, you know, and use sensation tools to like give yourself whole new levels that you didn't expect. You can definitely play a lot of these games on your own. Mm, I love it. You can throw on your best Alice Child accent if you're, <laughs> if you're, because it's so. I love I love the Sydney accent. I, I love Sydney, by the way. Do shout out to anybody in Sydney. Such a good <laughs> restaurant scene over there. Uh, that was a side note. The question that I have, it's sort of. I want to premise it with: Did you ever see Hunger Games? <laughs> remember the Hunger Games? Yeah. So this question. Remember how does a whistle go? It's like mm. something like this. Uh, anyway, yeah. Great move, great movies. <laughs> and this question, because it's what are sex games? Are we thinking Hunger Games style? <laughs> and how do they help inspire hotter <sighs> sex? 
the Hunger Games of sex games. I think it could be a thing. Someone die? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think. So basically, when I set any clients or any people, I just chat to people generally out in the world and force this upon them because I you know, do love just to chat about sex whenever I can. Um, it, they are little exercises to try together in like a fun, goal-free environment. So I think so many people place orgasm as like the end point of like what good sex looks like. And that can like really hold us back from actually being able to enjoy what we're experiencing. And so these games are a way of like throwing out that old that old script and that old rule book and just like trying something new. So yeah, there's heaps. Do you want me to start chatting about the different ones that I give people? So some examples. So one that I really like to get if someone like doesn't really know what they like in bed or what to ask for is like a game which is like how do I like to be touched? And so you print off a whole bunch of cards which are different body parts off a whole load of cards which are different types of touch and you just like pick two cards at random and then you like ask your partner like I would like you to wiggle my booty or lick my collarbone or you know nibble my toe (laughs) and it gets you laughing and trying new things and it takes away some of that embarrassment of I would never ask for that you know I'm not I don't feel comfortable asking for that but then when you do and it's in a game and like, oh dear, the game told me to do it. Tee hee. You know, suddenly <laughs> you discover so much more than you maybe would do if you were just coming out with these suggestions on your own. Mm. And like so there's heaps of these different types of little games that I get people to try. And some of the most important thing is like before and afterwards, kind of like establishing like before the before you start playing the game, like setting it up so that you're feeling really safe and comfortable. You might want to like light some candles, get a space that feels like really connected and sensual and fun for you guys and talk about anything that's, you know, off limits today for whatever reason. Like I'm like not in the mood for XYZ touch or whatever. And afterwards have a little informal chat around, ah, what was the hottest thing for you? What did you like less? And what does it make you curious to try next time? Mm -hmm. And like those three questions after trying anything new together, it's just a really easy way to encourage people to chat more about sex, be more curious about um, like future exercises and like future things that could work. Because the games themselves are sort of like the practice space. You're learning all of this juicy stuff that you can then incorporate it in like the, the play space of like, you know, outside of the, outside of the game. So yeah, you le- you learn all of these skills and then you can bring them to life into the into your real sex life. It's one of the key things: the goallessness and just embracing the another. I don't know when you say the newness, but I mean the obvious the newness. But I mean like embracing the awkward or um, embracing whatever's <laughs> going to happen next without having an idea of what it should look like. Is that is like is that one of the main things? Is like getting really creative. So I imagine you just named a couple things that people could do, and there's like the aftercare conversation. You know what worked and didn't mm. work. But I imagine that if people just open up and get creative, there's like endless things like you know hundreds or thousands of things that we can try that can bring in more a new sense of play well there's also games that you can buy too if you don't want to write down Mm. things on your own Mm. right there's a shit ton of sex games what's that book with the the pages that um that rip out yeah i like that oh 101 nights of great sex yeah and it has these like sealed pages and then you open up it gives you these ideas i think what people are often doing though is trying things out pulling the pieces that work for them because not all of them are going to be hot right we'll try a thing we'll be like well, that was or that didn't the, do much for me. Dice, there's like kinky the dice, dice yeah. too. There's a bunch of different options. But sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, but I was just thinking about if you can't get creative on your own, there are things already available that you could buy totally. to help you. Totally. Uh, and little conversation starter cards, there's fun ones where you swipe, you know, little apps where you swipe left if it's a fantasy that you have and your partner also swipes left and it shows you your matches. So it's like an oh. interactive version of like the yes no maybe game. It shows you both of your like, you know, your the ones that like, light you up, yeah. yeah. And then you're like, yeah. oh, you matched on this little fantasy. Let's talk about that. So yeah, there's heaps that you can find as well. Um, but yeah, you're so right. It's the key to it is not being attached to outcome of it being okay if it's a bit clunky and weird and you know some things don't work. And when you've got that outcome, you can you'll start creating your own games. You know what I mean? You'll once you've started doing it a couple of times. You'll find your language. You'll find your comfort. You'll it'll just become an, an integrated part of your sexual exploration and your sex life without needing to like sit down and be like, okay, these are, this is the game that we're going to play. And it doesn't need to be so forced after a while because you'll just 
have the skills to be able to do these things. But at first, especially for people who have never really talked openly about sex or have never fallen outside of the script that they learned really early, they do often like need some support in getting those ideas and to getting that mindset. Um, and yeah, it was the kink scene and the BDSM scene which made me realize how much better <laughs> some of these communities do this because it has to, right? To be consensual, safe, and sane, you need to have the the pre-negotiation because the play that you're about to do is so much more potentially dangerous or potentially even intense. And so then you need to have the ask to go afterwards. And so these communities are just getting so much better at the communication piece and realizing the benefit of this curious mindset of okay what next you know what what did what did we learn what was what was great what was not and even if you don't have any interest in kink and bdsm at all you can replicate that kind of structure in your own in your own sex life Mm. i'm curious if you have a partner so what a lot of partnerships are misaligned in certain ways where one partner may be a little bit more open to playfulness or initiating new positions or avenues of play whether whether or not that's being poly or open or kink and BDSM, but let's bring it back to more basic when we're talking about uh, long-term relationships and your partner is just kind of stuck in that rut. Are you to initiate if you, if you want change and you're seeking this novelty yet you have had conversations with your partner and they don't seem to be on board. Like what's wrong with our sex life? Everything's great. Mm. Do you have any tips <laughs> for approaching this when it's sort of, there might be an imbalance and yeah, especially in couples, I feel like that happens mm. frequently. Yeah. It's a great question. It's always helpful. I think to lean on the positives of why you're wanting this, you know, it'd be so hot for me if we tried X, Y, Z, or I loved it that time where we did this because it made me feel why, is there any way we can try that again and do more of that? You know, like leaning on the positives rather than, you know, oh, like I'm a bit bored of trying this same old position. Like, can we, you know, people immediately get on the defensive and it's no longer fun and explorative and that disconnect's already kind of there. Um, so if you sort of lean from why it's important and exciting and fun for you, you're definitely more likely to get someone being like, oh, right, I'll give it a go for you because that sounds you know, you're, you're, you're selling it to me, you're selling it. Mm-hmm. And also like identifying like what their fantasies could be or maybe something that they're curious about. So I think the yes, no, maybe list is, is great for some people, but it's a bit much. <laughs> Not everyone's as big as a sex geek as I am. Mm-hmm. But the yes, no, maybe list is you write out all of the things that you bloody love that are really hot for you. You know they're great. You know your boundaries, the things you never want to try, you're not that interested in. And your maybes are like, hmm, I'm curious, I'm interested. All right, I'll give them a go if we you know, have a little chat about it. And so if you do a similar kind of exercise to that and you find that one of your partner's maybes or one of your partner's curiosities, then you can kind of start there as long as obviously you're into it too and you're open to it. Starting with something that they're really curious about, if they're generally a little bit more reserved or reluctant, you, know, you can start with something that's always been on their mind rather than like starting with all of your desires. Like think about their desire as well. So they feel like listened to and part of the journey and excited as well. Yeah, it's more of that curiosity on on all ends. It spices things up and helps people feel more connected. You know, and, and if I was having sex with someone who was very one sided about their desires and their mm. fantasies, but they weren't like asking me about mine, even if mine seem, I don't know, like a little more. I don't know, simple or far low out. key or far out. <laughs> yeah, I'm the one. I think like, acceptance is probably part of that. Oh yeah, if there is something that might shock you that you hear from your partner. Like, I think right. having acceptance for that and openness so they don't feel shut down and shame, right? Yeah. Just perpetuate shame if you are like, oh my God, mm. you're into that. Like, that's probably something you want to stay away from saying. You should be like, interesting. I never thought of that myself. Now I know. Yeah. Or like, that's totally. not normal. Why would you want that? That's yeah. not normal. That's, no, that's not yeah, let's not yeah. throw around the N word. You no. know? Yeah. Well, no and, such thing as normal. Just I be know. excited to hear something new. You're like, ah, I had never thought of that. Cool. How do we, you know, what a what an amazing like new idea, you know? And it doesn't yeah, mean we have to do you. it too, right? Like yeah. we could say that and still say and might not be my jam, but like let's find a kind of a middle ground to try it out or like talk about it more or something. But it doesn't mean you have totally. to be a guaranteed yes all the time. Like I'm a definite maybe to that. <laughs> good definite maybe. <laughs> not yeah. saying no, but I'm a definite maybe. Yeah, I'm a definite definite maybe no. I don't know. Maybe yes. I'm not sure. <laughs> exactly. I, so I have a question for you. Well, before the question, um, 
what is it called? Niru massage? Niru? It's the one where you use your body to massage. Oh, uh, yeah. That, that might be like a trademark Niru brand gel. name. Is that with like the in, gel? Yeah. That's a, the Israeli gel. company that they make it with the gel. And it's you're like, like rubbing the, your breasts. The LG gel. based mm. gel. Is it called Niru? I think it's N U R U. Yeah. yeah. And so I've never I like, you know, learned anything about this or I just know of it. Like I've heard of it. And so I don't, it's not like something that I do regularly, but knowing about it inspired me randomly to try. Remember, I talked about the hot lava game <laughs> before. Yeah. <laughs> to instead, like just being playful with my partner, we're fully naked. And I'm like, you know what? I'm going to do this thing. So it's not full neuro massage, but it's so it's like inviting in like this ridiculousness because my, what I do is he's laying on the bed on his stomach. And then I pretend like the bed is hot lava and I have to rub my body on his skin without touching. I can't touch the bed because if I do, I went in the hot lava and I die. And then I have to like flip over gracefully, <laughs> but also I kind of like stab him with my elbow sometimes. And like, Hopefully and then your bed is low so you don't get injured. <laughs> well, no, because this all happens on the bed. We're not like venturing anywhere else. What and if then, you slip off though? Too then, much I, then I die in more than hot lava. It's I'd fall into the center of the earth, but it was worth it because it was fun. And then when I bet on my back, now I'm like massaging my, my ass and like all kind. And then I, and this, we're just laughing because it's ridiculous. Mm. So uh, that's another thing that came to mind is like, we can get really inspired by other mm. things and not do the exact thing. You know, I'm not a professional. Totally. What did you, you say? Massage? I like the way you said it earlier. Massage. <laughs> <laughs> Massage. Yeah. Yeah. You can learn little tools from that. So, but I wanted to bring that into something that April and I absolutely love, which is the world of sex toys. So this is gonna be a little bit of a true or false with an explanation for you. So true or false, sex toys lead to better sex. And if so, why? Mm. yeah I mean I don't want to say the whole it depends thing but it does sort of depend I think generally yes generally I'm a big big believer like in sex toys for lots of different reasons you can feel whole new sensations that you couldn't replicate with just your body and your hands and your tongue newness is great leads to like more powerful orgasms it also encourages conversation if you're doing it with a like introducing toys with a partner discoveries of like what your body is capable of it's great for relaxing your muscles and your pelvis so it's good for people who experience painful sex and yeah they can also like help with loads and loads of different sexual concerns as well so generally yes yeah, sex toys bloody great love them big tick i think the only potential issue with sex toys is i do see quite a lot of people who become really reliant on one type of sensation and this can happen with so many different things, not just vibrators and sex toys. You know, you can come reliant on porn or reliant on a particular fantasy or reliant on a certain touch that you give yourself. And it can make you very, very focused on like a really small part of your body, like really hyper focused on like clitoral focused orgasm, for example, which over time might not then feel like that satisfying because you're missing out on like a big, beautiful body orgasm and like bigger sensation. So, yes, they're great. But just remember that they're just like one tool that you have in your toolbox, I guess, and your own tools can be even sexier. So things like a touch and your voice and eye contact and breath and movement, you know, your smile, you know, you've got so many tools that you've already got and vibrators are just another one, which are amazing and sex toys and sensation toys and bondage and all of the beautiful things that all just adding to that toolbox, but you have lots yourself as well. I like that, that you're not sticking just to sex toys as the only option, because I sometimes get stuck in the sex toy rut where mm -hmm. I know that if I don't bust my sex toy out, even though I'm having an amazing journey of intimacy and play with my partner, I'm like, oh, I, I need the sex toy because I need the vibrator. Otherwise, I won't have an orgasm, right? That's already heady mm -hmm. because I already told myself I couldn't or that I won't. So I have been really trying to feel into the sensations of what's happening uh, in my mm -hmm. body and around my body. And it has been helpful sometimes even taking away your sight by putting a blindfold on mm. if you are too into what's going on around you and, and you're squirreling out with, <laughs> with your attention, um, that can help <laughs> because it enhances other sensations. That mm. would be something also taking away with some um, movement with your hands. If you get them tied behind your back or you can do the hog tie thing. I think that's really awesome. I, the other night I was really wanting to get into the mode of be feeling sexy and playful because I felt like our sex hasn't my, my partner and I, our sex hasn't been bad at all. It's just been 
pretty similar time and time again. Right. So I was like, I want to do something else. So I have all this like lingerie and it was, it was like, I didn't know exactly what it was, but it looked like it had, it was a cat suit with like two arms and two legs that was really tiny. So I, but it was one size fits all. So I put it on (laughs) and then it had no crotch or anything. And then I get it on. I put on some like red boots that I didn't really think about like, Oh, but I was like, this thing doesn't have to come off because it it has a hole. So I'm like, this is great. And so then my partner was like, oh, so I was like waiting on the couch. I was being all sexy. And then uh, he like busted out a couple of toys that we hadn't used in a while. And I think we, I was like blindfolded. And then all of a sudden, I swear to God, we were like in the midst, the fucking doorbell rang. Oh, and I'm like, who's here? No. And I was like, no. And I was like, we can't answer. I was like, wait, it, it, it was like some delivery that I had assigned for. Did you role play the delivery? Oh, the no, delivery because that would be wildly inappropriate. Yeah. And, and then my partner's like, are you going to go downstairs like that? I was like, I can't go downstairs like this. And then it literally was like, wah, wah, because it, it totally t- transitioned. And I tried, I, I, it took me a while to get out. I just told him to rip off the cat suit but I was in my play I felt so sexy and excited oh, and then the doorbell so we did play off the delivery driver thing later but I took off the cat suit so <laughs> this is just an example though of things that you could do even it doesn't have to be something sexy you could put on a hat of some sort like a beret or mm-hmm. some kind of paper paper person hat right I don't know if you have the paper boy hats they're called paper boy hats but I'm saying paper person to kind of keep it neutral here with gender but you know what I'm talking about this old school 19 19- I have no idea what you're talking about <laughs> But like I'm just going to smile hats. and nod. I can, I can like picture Peaky it. Like Peaky Blinders? Yeah, like Peaky Blinders. No, Peaky yeah. Blinders. Oh, yeah, I thought you were going to, going to role play. So like, like not, not not to the delivery person, because that's not consensual, but to your partner, like the doorbell rings and it's kind of like, oh shit, here's the moment to say it's killing the vibe or option B or C. Oh, did you call yeah. for delivery? Well, I was so distracted. <laughs> it could have gone one of two ways. Yeah, yeah, it could have gone one of two ways. for something. I was like, I'm going to have to go to that. Post office tomorrow. Like, get this <laughs> thing. It totally went, yeah. And then I got back in my head. I wanted to share that because I think we are human and that was funny. We were both laughing at yeah. ourselves and it was playful and creative. And it gets you out of the funk if you do feel any stagnation when it comes to sex, especially if you in long term partnerships. And I don't know if you want to share some other fun tips because you did share a lot, but if it's to give people ideas sometimes it's hard to get creative yes, totally and i love both your stories the newer gel and that one because it's <laughs> you know as you say it could have gone like any direction right but it, both of your stories you definitely learned something you loved you know i love getting into that cat suit fuck yeah i felt so sexy or like i love being like sliding around in our bodies like getting this beauty massage and you're learning something that you don't that doesn't work for you you know like okay outside distractions i don't eroticize them you know, it just pulls me out of the moment. I need to be distraction free. I need to be in the moment, you know, so you'll, even though, you know, it was funny and those laughs, you, you, you've learned, you've got things you're like, cool. I know more about myself, actually. Yeah. And hilarious about the neurogel as well. I've retried it recently. Um, and it was a classic example of like one person being like, this is amazing. And I was just there like, I feel a bit cold. <laughs> cold. <laughs> Do you have a blanket? Yeah. Well, is it, it, does it get on your sheets though? That's, <laughs> yeah but does it get on your sheets or do you need like a yeah it does so I okay. put down a whole little like rock sheet like a special okay. like sheet and I just like didn't really get in the mo- like look maybe it was just a bit of a cold day you know I'm willing to try it again but you know again classic example of something like this is going to be so sexy let's give this a go and like one person having a great time the other person just like being pulled out of the moment for you know whatever reason so yeah again able to laugh about it afterwards mm-hmm. um it's always like, oh, you're such a nana. Like, stop getting so cold. <laughs> it's a bit chilly. I mean, you can just put some socks on, like a beanie and socks, like naked with a beanie and socks and massage. <laughs> so what, do you, what do you do? She might yeah. not want to get the neural gel on the beanie or socks. That's true. Though. Very true. Uh, what do, so what do you do, like in April's case, when like, okay, this kind of killed the vibe a little bit, or you were talking about like, you were cold. Obviously, put a blanket on or, or April could like, I don't know, whip out her vibrator, try to get more into the mood or something. But like, what do you do when, when things go a little awry and you're like, all right, I'm in my... I'm in my head now. Like how, how do we get back? How do we get back? Get back to connection. Yeah. And so there's stuff, definitely things you can like, but like, all right. So next time we're going to warm the gel. Like that will feel so amazing on my body. If it's like, like play with heat and play with temperature and make that part of the play. Like I love hotness on my body. So I'm like, great. Next time we're warming up the gel or we're doing this outside in the sun. Um, but in the moment, yeah, you just got to work out if it's, if it's manageable, if you can get back into, get back into the zone, be like, okay, I don't like that feeling of all over my body I just like it in this place so let's get back to you know get back into the zone in a different way or if you just think like park this it's not working for me 
like let's debrief and work out why and like sometimes that happens sometimes you can't get back in you know the delivery guy is here and you know it's done for now but that doesn't mean that it's you know done forever you can try it again you can put that cat suit back on you know you can do it again but yeah in terms of like getting out of your head generally as like tips to get out of your head anything that helps you like focus on the physical sensations so like what is my partner actually doing to my body or like what am I doing to my body what does that feel like how can I bring my attention there also can I use other techniques to like build arousal again like my breath like am I holding my breath and you know doing really shallow breathing if I deepen it do I feel more you know movement am I lying really still or clenching my muscles like can I move can I tense and relax my pelvic floor you know can I make sound like groan like all of these little things it's about being like a good receiver you know, being like good in bed isn't just about being able to give great pleasure. It's about being able to actually like receive good pleasure and like be in control of like what your body is doing. And actually you can hack your body, I think, sometimes to to relax and feel pleasure through those sorts of techniques. Well, next time the uh, gel comes out, you could just do like a little exercise, some like some uh, <laughs> jumping jacks or to, to kind of get <laughs> the warmth. Yes, uh, that's my that would be my hack right there. Or like a little wiggle a dance. One. Wiggle. Yeah. Like, OK, like I'm doll. getting hot now. Yeah, that's the thing. We just have to take our I like it. take ourselves less seriously sometimes yeah. when things are supposed to be hot, because I was fully in that outfit with the red boots, knee high boots that were stilettos. That I'm like, I never remember buying these, but these are the perfect fuck boots yeah like, i love these things like pretty women fuck boots yeah yeah uh, I see that can I you take a photo like, for me next time oh please maybe <laughs> maybe send it to me we can actually we can make that some role play in the moment like oh i'm gonna message amy and send her a sexy photo yeah I'm jealous uh oh, the other the maybe list <laughs> yeah the maybe list she's like yeah that's a hard that's a definite maybe yeah uh, the other <laughs> thing that so we had mentioned in the beginning of the podcast the the five things the five things do we cover mm. all of them oh yes mm. the five things you should yeah, know when it comes to sex we covered like quite a few i think a big one for me this belief that people think good sex like, like oh what makes good sex what makes a good lover and i think it's silent you know like without any words intuitive like people just know what to do and it's spontaneous like it just sort of happens and like anything that sort of breaks that like whether you're talking about it or being like that's all good like that sort of stuff or you know planning it and so it's no longer spontaneous um or like learning from other people and having to actually like hone the craft makes you bad in bed and I think that's such like a harmful belief system because good lovers are made not born like no one bought is born good in bed you know like anyone who's great in bed it's a craft like if they have refined that skill you know they have learned and they've studied and they've tried it on different bodies and they've tried it on themselves and you know it takes years of exploration and like work to be amazing in bed and because of you know all the shame and taboo and silencing and embarrassment that we talked about earlier so few people feel comfortable enough to like do that outwardly and happily and so yeah I think that is in terms of like the five five things um I think a big one is being able to normalize normalize the clunky like normalize getting it wrong as I've talked about already like normalize that it you know it's trial and error and some things feel amazing and some things don't uh removing the goal of orgasm I think is another one that we've spoken about a lot you know and getting away from that attachment to outcome like which is really human right you you know especially if you're giving pleasure to you know a partner like, I just want to give you this amazing experience and it's not doing the thing that I want it to it's natural to have an attachment to an outcome but if your your partner feels that and then they'll feel pressure you know and we pick up on that very easily we know when our partner's like seeking some sort of outcome in our body and that doesn't make us feel more relaxed so both part meet parties whether you're giving or receiving or removing that attachment to orgasm or outcome my third one yeah I've already talked about which is like good sex is about receiving being good at receiving pleasure not just giving it so like being able to like use your own body like breath and movement and things like that to try and get back into your body and out of your head also I think it's good touch and giving good touch whether it's sex or penetration or foreplay or oral or anything or a massage it's so much less about the exact tip, like techniques that you're doing and so much more about like your intention and your presence of that touch, you know, so you don't have to have all of these amazing like erotic massage skills to give an amazing erotic massage. If you're just being really present and reading a partner's body language and you're really like putting care into every single touch you give them, that's so much better than like 
a rehearsed, amazing, like script of, you know, strokes that have funky names. You don't need to know. <laughs> what you know, call the, what was the, the outside dog. downward dog the other day? Of the year? Oh, that was a position. She, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the like, assassin. Was out? Yeah, the assassin. <laughs> the assassin. I, I, don't get me wrong, I love a funky name, but you don't yeah. need to know them all. Do amazing touch. I'm doing the assassin okay. right now. Yes. <laughs> Well, so you know, yeah, whatever wants to hear that. <laughs> well, mm-hmm. like, ready for the fire. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, I'm good. Yeah, and I think my fifth one would be like pr- practicing on your your own body as well, and like masturbate more with more variety, with more curiosity. But like, discover your own body, find what you like. Think about like, how would I describe this to someone else? Like, what exactly do I love? Like, um, and find those words. So that you know and you can like help other people to discover it as well because if you don't know how you know it's not really fair to expect your partner to just be able to like work it out all on their own because you haven't done that yourself either well you're not psychic right you're not psychic. Not. yeah uh, you're in charge of your own pleasure we all do understand and, that by now hopefully because it took me a long time to understand that oh it's it's on me to understand my body. I thought other people would figure it out for me. See, because because that's what you mm. learn through whatever media or what you learn sometimes in it, talking to friends. They're like, oh, you didn't get an orgasm from that, or oh, and I'm like, no. Oh. In my twenties, mm. I couldn't understand. I knew how to give myself an orgasm, but I didn't think it was okay to bring that into my sexual experiences. I thought that was my private time, mm. right? So I know we're far beyond that because we're not in like the one hundred and one stages of pleasure anymore. At least. I know I'm not, but it's still sometimes hard to grasp. And the the mind reading thing is important. But I think when it comes to the self-pleasure piece, I want to share that it is about loving yourself and accepting yourself for some of the, some of the things that you may get stuck in your head about, whether like Mm. in in a sexual experience with someone else or yourself. And a lot of people I've heard dudes talk about like, am I too sweaty? Do I smell bad in sexual experiences with um, Mm. new partners? And I'm like, it doesn't matter. Did you have a good time? Mm. Uh, Did Mm. it feel good? Did you trust the situation? Was it safe? So uh, I love the, Mm. the advice though. I think that those are really good tools, like bullet pointed tips that everyone can take home um, or take to the bedroom or to the bathroom, wherever you want to get it done. (laughs) The workplace. (laughs) Just don't involve the delivery person okay that's important unless they want it and you do too um but my delivery driver is regular so definitely not trying to involve him. oh that's an important detail yeah <laughs> gotta see him again okay yeah he's like april hey i'm like what's up dude yeah. um <laughs> all right well ah uh, i really enjoyed talking to you about this fun sex games. Do, 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 I know. Do. I was like, do the Hunger Games. I can't remember. <laughs> it's been years, but you've seen that Hunger Games, right? Alice? Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah. Um, and if you haven't out there, then, you know, Jennifer Lawrence and her prime. I bet there's a porn on Hunger Games now. It's like the Hunger Games porn version. Oh, saying. It's gotta be. Come <laughs> on. That's the best game. That's higher me. subculture. Yes, of course. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I could come up with some fun names. Okay. So before we have to obviously at some point let you um, have your weekend because it is Friday in Sydney right now. And I know it's the morning, but um, will you tell people how they can work with you also about your work? Um, and if they want to find you, whether it's social media or uh, your resources, your workshops, uh, please let us know. Yeah. So I do a couple's sex and intimacy course. Uh, and I do that in person in Sydney, but also online or a hybrid of the two. So global friends welcome um, and you get to work with me directly. And we go through all of the tools um, and foundations of what a great life of sex and intimacy looks like. We cover Heaps and heaps of topics, and it's lots and lots of fun. I also, you can find me on Instagram on Vulva Dialogues. Um, love the name, love vulva, the name. Vulva, like a pussy, dialogues, <laughs> like a chat. And that's also my website, uh, vulvadialogues.com. And I also do sex coaching and sex counseling with people one on one as well. So if you're not ready for the full sex and intimacy course, and you're just wanting to sort of dip your toe in the water of what it's like to chat to, someone about these issues yeah you can work with me online one-on-one or in person one-on-one as well and I also do weekly workshops as well which are just really informal online conversations 90 minutes every single week with a different guest speaker around loads of different topics on sexuality and exploration um they happen every Tuesday evening my time which would what be Monday 
I don't know. What is, what is 19 hours? I think you're 19 yeah, or 18 exactly. hours ahead. But you can yeah, just Monday Google that, everyone. Point. Just Google, okay? <laughs> and then you'll, you'll figure it out. <laughs> um, yeah, so heaps, heaps going on. Um, yeah. Vulva dialogues. Mm. Well, I love that twist on vagina monologues, the vulva dialogues. Yes. It's very smart. So I, I love that. And thank you for sharing your wisdom. Hopefully y'all pulled away some good tips, some juicy tips to take home and take on with you. And if not, then consult Alice Child and you have lots of resources ongoing and you can tap, tune into Shameless Sex on Tuesday and then, well, it'll be Monday. So you can tune into <laughs> Alice on Monday and then uh, listen to Shameless Sex on Tuesday. So thank you, Alice. And uh, we will hopefully see you again soon. To all of our listeners, thank you. We don't have a trailer or a teaser. We, we uh, show Showed you all of our podcast network teasers. There were a bunch. And if not, you can go back to, for the last several episodes. There were like 11. How many teasers did we do? I think there was, yeah, 10 to 15. a lot. App appetizers. Appetizers. <laughs> the, every, from our Pleasure Podcast Network and lots of sex positive podcasts to check out. So we're done with that, but we're not done telling you how much we love you. And we would love for you to check out our TikTok account or Shameless Sex Podcast and also Instagram or Shameless Sex Podcast as well. We are doing lots of fun. We're doing some giveaways. We're doing some uh, content. We also just have some fun uh, content that Amy and I create on a regular. We think we're fun. We think we're fun. <laughs> and hey, just go, hey, okay. <laughs> and also, if you have a minute, please, and even if you don't, just do it anyway. Uh, give us five stars on iTunes and Spotify. You have to listen to a whole episode on Spotify in order to review, but you don't have to say anything. You just start. So how easy is that? And then on iTunes, we read every single review. And um, if you don't want to make me cry, then make me happy with five stars. Okay. Because I do actually cry. I let Amy will tell you. It's true. I'm like, dude. Uh, so that's all we have for you this week. But thank you for being part of the shameless sex revolution, everyone. We'll see you next Tuesday. Ciao for now.